good morning everyone welcome to part 2 of the lecture 1 under the module 1 so if you recall our discussion in the previous lecture we discuss about the classification of energy sources followed by the energy chain so this is basically the continuation of the previous lecture so in this lecture we will discuss about the major sources of energy so major sources of energy includes fossil fuels water that is hydropower nuclear energy, agriculture and the organic waste. The average percentage consumption trend of various primary energy sources is indicated in this particular figure here. So, if you look at this particular figure on the slide, so this indicates the average percentage consumption trend of various primary energy sources. So, alongside the values are also tabulated in the tabular form. Here if you can see the coal as a major source of energy, so the contribution of the coal as a source to the total energy consumption around the world is around like 32.5 percent, crude oil is around 38.3 percent and the gas is around 19 percent. So these are all basically the average values and the trend it may differ from country to country. Looking at this particular slide here, if you can see that the heavy dependence on the fossil fuel is still clearly stands out from this particular number, say for example, coal, crude oil and gas. So, if you look at this particular number, so it indicates the heavy dependence on the primary fossil fuels for the energy purpose. About 90 percent, so if you sum up these three figures, so it indicates around 90 percent of primary energy consumption in the world, it comes from these fossil resources and the share of energy consumption, the share of fossil fuels consumption in India is more than 90 percent. So, which indicates that still the world is relying on this particular primary energy resources for the consumption purpose. So, let us discuss about this primary sources of energy one by one. So, let us begin with the fossil fuels. So, fossils, these are in fact the fossils of old biological life that once existed on the surface of the earth. It is formed in several parts of the earth at varying depth during several million years of slow decomposition and chemical action of buried organic environment under favorable condition of say pressure, heat and marine bacterial environment. These fossil fuels includes solid fuel, liquid and gaseous fuel. So, let us discuss about this solid, liquid and gaseous fossil fuels one by one. So, in case of solid fuel which mainly a coal, it includes anthracite, bituminous, lignite and peat. The fossil fuels are the major source of energy since about 1850s that is we can say the start of the industrial era. Currently we are passing through the peak period of fossil age and as per the estimate if the world continues to consume the fossil fuels in the similar rate then the reserves of the coal will last only for 200 years and these are basically an indication and not a realistic figure because the identification and the discovery of the new coal site as well as the oil reserves will add the number to this particular figure and eventually the figure may get changed. And that is the reason this gives only an indication and not the realistic figure. Now, if you see the consumption of the coal, so as we discuss, so as per the estimate, the current reserve of the coal is abandoned and enough to last for 
200 years that is what is the indication. But as we know the coal has a low calorific value and because of the discrete location of this particular coal site the transportation becomes expensive and when coal burn it produces mainly a pollutant in the form of CO2 and CO. So, the excessive use of coal leads to ecological unbalance of CO2 in the atmosphere and that is the reason the effective and the efficient utilization of the coal is the need of the hour so that it can be used efficiently for the energy purpose. Now, if you look at the energy density value of these different coals, we can see that the anthracite has the energy density in the range of 32 to 34 mega joule per kg, bituminous has the energy density of 27 to 33 mega joule per kg, lignite has the energy density in the range of 14 to 19 and peat has the least energy density it is in the range of 15 to 17. So, now let us discuss about the next fossil source that is liquid which includes petroleum and its derivatives. So, similarly as per the estimate here as well the current global oil reserves can last only for 100 years that is what is the estimate or you can say the indication right now and this particular figure as I mentioned earlier as well it may change in future. So, most of the countries including India are deficient of petroleum reserve and because of that there is a shift over from petroleum to coal for the energy or you can say for the production of the valuable chemical. So, rising of crude oil prices is another major factor for countries or world's economic crisis. So, in terms of energy density if you look at this petroleum product, so the crude petroleum has the energy density of around 45 mega joule per kg while the petrol which is the pure form of energy it has the energy density of around like 51 to 52 mega joule per kg and the diesel has the energy density of around 45 to 46 mega joule per kg. So, this indicates the energy density value of petroleum products. So, the next in the fossil fuel category is the gaseous fuel which includes natural gas. So, the cleanest of all fossil based fuel is a natural gas which is plentiful and flexible. The gas is inefficiently getting utilized and burned at the source due to inaccessibility and high transportation cost. So, now if you look at this particular slide here, so here there are four main categories of unconventional natural gases are highlighted which are nothing but the shale gas, the coal bed methane, tide gas and methane hydrate. So, let us discuss about these unconventional natural gases one by one. So, to begin with let us discuss about the shale gas. It is trapped within the shale formation. So, basically in this case what happens is like the gas is getting trapped during the formation of these shales and the shales are nothing but a fine grained sedimentary rocks and that particular rocks act as a rich source of petroleum and natural gas here. That is what is the meaning of the shale gas in this particular unconventional natural gas resources. Secondly here we can see that there is a coal bed methane. It is also known as a colliery gas or coal seam gas. So, basically it can be found in absorbed form within coal matrix. So, this particular gas can be found in the absorbed form in the coal matrix under the earth surface. So, another category in these unconventional natural gases is tide gas. So, basically it is a gas which is trapped within the rock which has a low permeability. So, the example of low permeability rock are nothing but limestone and the sandstone. 
so this kind of gases are getting trapped in this kind of rocks which has a very low permeability and because of that this tight gas is considered to be an unconventional source of natural gas because it requires significant hydraulic fracturing a much more extensive process to access this particular gas that means geologically it is very difficult to access this particular tight gas so another class in the case of unconventional natural gases is methane hydrate so in this case a large amount of methane is trapped within a crystal structure of water forming a solid similar to that of a ice and the methane hydrate is found in extensive seams under the deep water so if you look at the energy density of these gases so the energy density of the natural gas is around 50 mega joule per kg whereas methane which is around 85% pure methane has the energy density of around 45 mega joule per kg propane has 50 mega joule per kg and hydrogen has the highest energy density of around 142 mega joule per kg so among all these gases hydrogen has the highest energy density so now let us discuss about the next major source of energy that is hydropower so the hydropower is also known as water power is developed by utilizing the gravitational potential energy of water it is a well developed and established source of electric power hydropower became cheaper after development of electric power transmission in 1910 and the cost of hydropower plant is higher than the other power plants but the operating cost is quite low but this particular energy source has certain challenges which includes long duration for setup high capital investment and environmental and social problems are the major difficulties in its development so these are basically the challenges in this power source so let us discuss about the next source of energy that is a nuclear energy so in this case the uranium 235 and uranium 233 these are isotopes of uranium and plutonium 239 are used as nuclear fuels in nuclear reactors these are nothing but the mainly thermal reactors and out of these only u235 occurs in nature india has modest reserves of uranium and the natural uranium mainly contains 0.71% of u235 and 99.29% of u238 so as i mentioned earlier as well india has the modest reserves of uranium so similarly uranium 233 and plutonium 239 are produced from thorium 232 and uranium 238 which are known as a fertile materials respectively in a fast breeder reactor so the thorium is abundantly available in india in the form of monzite ore so if you look at this particular point here which indicates the controlled fusion of 1 kg of uranium 235 is equivalent to 2200 tons of oil or 4500 tons of coal which indicates that use of 1 kg of uranium will lead to a energy production which is equivalent to 2200 tons of oil or 4500 tons of coal so that means the energy which is produced from 
2200 tons of oil or 4500 tons of coal is equivalent to one controlled fission reaction of 1 kg of u235 in a reactor that is what is the meaning of this particular sentence here so the last the nuclear power is the least cost low emission technology that can provide base load power but similar to other major sources this particular source also has certain challenges these are nothing but limited raw materials high health hazard and radioactive waste management and if you look at the energy density of the natural uranium it has energy density of 0.3 into 10 is to power 6 megajoule per kg and the enriched uranium has the energy density of 3 into 10 is to power 6 megajoule per kg similarly for the uranium 233 uranium 235 and plutonium 239 these are energy densities respectively so the next major source of energy is agriculture and organic waste so in this case wood was a dominant fuel in pre industrialization era and still being used in rural areas for the energy purpose so in terms of agriculture or you can say the organic waste the sawdust bagas animal dung paddy husk and corn stem are accounting a major energy consumption and these particular sources are regarded as important energy supply for rural areas now there is a need for development of a appropriate equipment or you can say a technology which we can say a efficient or effective technology for extracting energy from such materials because although there are some existing technologies are available for the conversion of such raw material majorly we can see here for the burning purpose but still some refinement is required in this equipment as well as in this technologies so that it can be used more effectively for the energy purpose majorly we are highlighting in the form of burning purposes so if you see the energy density of this particular resources so in that the firewood has the energy density of 16 to 20 megajoule per kg the grain crops it has the energy density of 14 to 16 megajoule sugar cane 5 to 8 megajoule per kg animal waste it has the energy content of 4 to 8 megajoule per kg and the garbage which is a mixed waste it has the energy density of 5 to 16 megajoule per kg so now let us compare these different sources of energy in this particular table so if you look at this particular table it shows the sources of energy the types of this particular energy source its advantages and disadvantages so now let us discuss about coal oil natural gas firewood and nuclear energy so among all these energy sources this firewood is no more regarded as a conventional energy source and that's why it is accounted under the non conventional energy sources although it is a renewable source of energy so now if you start with the coal so coal is a conventional source of energy but it is a non renewable source and its advantages are it is extensively available and efficient conversion technologies are available for effectively converting this raw material to electricity but these advantages associated with the utilization of this source include polluting as this is a polluting source which mainly produce co and co2 as a pollutant along with the nox and sox and bulky to transport now if you look at the another source that is oil 
this is again a conventional source of energy, but non renewable in nature and its advantages are easy to transport and it is a basis of petrochemical industry for the production of various chemicals. However, the disadvantages associated with this particular source are pollutant release causes acid rain and exploration of new fuel is not easy for this kind of source. Similarly, if you discuss about the natural gas, it is again a conventional source of energy, but non renewable in nature and its advantages easier to transport because the pipelines are already in place for the transportation of such energy source cleaner than oil and coal and cheaper than oil, but it has certain disadvantages. Pollutant release also causes acid rain by the utilization of this kind of resources. Exploration of new fuel is not easy for this kind of resources as well. So, now let us discuss about the next source that is firewood. So, as I mentioned earlier, firewood is no more regarded as a conventional source of energy and that is the reason it is accounted under the non-conventional energy source, but it is a renewable source of energy and the advantages associated with the utilization of this particular source for the energy purpose includes easy accessibility and provides energy to large population. Whereas, this particular source also has certain disadvantages that is collection is time consuming because the collection of this kind of resources is not easy as this kind of resources are not available at a single site. These particular sources causes pollution and because of that it is promoting a greenhouse effect. And the next source of energy in this table is nuclear energy. It also comes under the category of conventional source of energy and non renewable in nature. The advantages of this particular source of energy, it emits large amount of energy. This is what is the advantage. If you recall our discussion in the previous slide itself, I have discussed about the amount of energy which can be released by utilizing this kind of resources. So, in that nuclear energy is at the top. However, this particular source is also associated with the certain disadvantages which includes it generates radioactive waste which is a major challenge for utilization of this kind of resources for energy purpose and also a expensive. So, this covers the major sources of energy as well as their advantages and the disadvantages. So, in the next slide, let us discuss about some other sources of energy as well. So, now if you take a look at this particular table here, which shows major other sources of energy ranging from hydropower, solar energy, wind energy, the tidal energy, geothermal and biogas. So, now if you take a look at this particular second column here in this table, among all these energy resources which are listed in this table, the hydropower is the only conventional source of energy and a renewable source of energy as well, whereas all other sources are non-conventional in nature, but renewable sources of energy. So, now let us discuss about the hydropower first and its advantages. So, the advantages of hydropower for the energy purpose includes non-polluting because it does not emit any pollutant while utilizing this kind of source for energy purpose, promotes irrigation and fishing as well. It is a cheap source of energy. However, the disadvantages of this particular source are displacement of local community that is a major disadvantage of this particular source 
and expensive to set up hydro power plant that is the another disadvantage of this kind of source. So now next in the list is solar energy. The advantages of this source of energy includes it is inexhaustible in nature and non-polluting as well. Whereas the disadvantages includes expensive because the installation of solar power plant is a expensive process and majorly most of the radiation goes waste because of the diffuse source that is another disadvantage associated with the utilization of this source for the energy purpose. Now the next in the list is wind energy. So the advantages associated with the wind energy again it is a non-polluting source, low production cost of electricity, safe and clean source of energy but the disadvantages are noise pollution which is a major disadvantage of this particular source, windmills costly to set up that means the installation of the windmill is costly. So now next in the chart is a tidal energy. So the advantages associated with this particular source of energy again it is a non-polluting and inexhaustible source of energy whereas if you see the disadvantages it destroys the wildlife habitat and difficult to harness. So these are the major disadvantage of this particular source of energy and the next is the geothermal source of energy. So the advantages associated with this source of energy it is a clean eco friendly and always available that means this kind of source is always available for the extraction of the energy. However, the disadvantages of this particular source are located far away from cities costly to transport the electricity to the consumer. So that is another major disadvantage of this particular source of energy. So now last in this particular chart is biogas. So if you look at the advantage of utilization of this particular source for the energy purpose which includes the low cost technology, easy to operate and make use of the waste which is available in nature it can be effectively utilized to produce energy. However, the disadvantages it causes greenhouse effect as I mentioned earlier as well the pollutant which are emitted during this particular process it cause majorly a greenhouse effect that is the major disadvantage of this particular process. So now let us discuss about the energy unit conversions. So this conversion systems would be utilized for solving the practice example in this module as well as in the next module. So for example purpose if you see here this particular table so if I have to convert 1 kilo calorie of energy equivalent to 1 kilo joule of energy so you can see that 1 kilo calorie of energy is equivalent to 4.184 kilo joule of energy. Similarly if you just take an example of this kilogram of oil equivalent. So 1 kilogram of oil equivalent is equivalent to 41,870 kilo joule of energy. So likewise this conversion system will be utilized while solving the practice example as well as the examples in the uh, different modules. So I will not go in details of this unit conversion system here. These are basically for the reference purpose as and when required you can refer to this particular unit conversion slide for solving these examples. Okay? So with this we will end this particular lecture. So in the next lecture we will discuss about energy scenario, prospects, need of alternative energy sources, common forms of energy, conventional and non-conventional energy sources. Regarding this lecture if you have any query feel free to contact me at vvgoud at the rate iitg.ac.in. Thank you.